Folks, listen, um, those that believe that the world is a simulated, um, you know, computer, that we're living inside of some kind of computer, that the world is a computer, everything's just a simulation, they primarily are basing everything upon the unknown, what they don't know. And so all your scientists and even now Bank of America coming out saying that they believe the that reality or that the world is uh, a simulated computer and we're all living in the computer or the matrix. They focus on the unknown. That's what they make their, you know, that's what they're obsessed with is the unknown, what they don't know. And what you and I should be focusing on is what we do know. As believers in Christ, there's much we know. And there is much that is absolutes. And our reality in Christ Jesus is not relative. Amen? It's very uh, clear, it's very uh, plain, and it's very um, it, it's very um, known, um, the things that we do know. And even in the Lord, we don't focus on what we don't know. You know, there are people... God's people even, that will focus on things they don't understand in the Word of God, and then they begin to, um, you know, they begin to basically try to figure it out. They uh, will, you know, add their own hypothesis or add their own, um, you know, ideas to the mix. And that's what you end up with. You end up with a mixture. Um, you know, the scripture says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. But it didn't stop there. It said, But, but, the Spirit searches all the things of God, the deep things of God, and reveals these things to us. I want to quote that again to you. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But the Spirit reveals those things to us. So, we're not uh, left in the dark. Amen? And we must depend on the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will lead and guide you into all truth, or like I like to call it, all reality. Now, we see glimpses. We're looking through a glass darkly, and we see glimpses of reality. But thank God for the slivers of light. Thank God for the... Flashes of light. The Bible says in the evening time there shall be flashes of light. Um, Thank God for those flashes that you and I are seeing. Because those flashes of light are not light from this world. Amen. As the storm, Almighty God's storm. As the Bible says there's a storm that encompasses God's throne. There's a tempest that encompasses God's throne. And... So as God approaches this world, as the revelation, as God reveals himself to this generation, the storm is approaching, and there's lightning, there's thundering, and that thundering is God's voice. The lightning is God's glory, and he's revealing himself in flashes, because you and I, in our physical frame, as far as our human bodies, you know, We couldn't handle God's presence. We wouldn't be able to handle. Look at Paul the Apostle was blinded by the light. And so God in his mercy reveals himself to us in flashes. I've seen flashes. And I tell you, just the flashes alone makes me want to see the whole picture. I want to, I want to know God. And I've only seen flashes. I've only seen glimpses of the Lord. Um, So, 
Do I focus on what I don't know? Do I focus on what I haven't seen? Or do I focus on those flashes? I focus on those flashes. I focus on the pieces of the puzzle that God has already revealed, and I put those where the Holy Ghost tells me to put them. I don't try to place and force pieces of the puzzle where they don't fit. Why, so many are doing that today, and they're getting distortion. No, we can't afford a distortion of truth. We must have the truth, and it must be clear, and it must be precise, and it must be easy to understand. So we have the truth, even though uh, there are many today that don't believe we have the truth. But this is what I primarily want us to see, is that the majority today are fo- focusing on the unknown. Case in point, let me go to a scripture for you in Acts. Acts chapter 17, verse uh, 23, Paul the Apostle says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions... I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. So, these people were not only focusing on the unknown, but they went to the place of actually saying their God was unknown. And Paul says, You're all too superstitious. Well, when I work, looked up this word superstitious, it means to be too religious. Wouldn't you say we're living in an hour where man is becoming too religious? Where everything becomes spiritual? Where everything becomes religious? Listen, not everything is religious. Amen? When you uh, sit down to have a meal at a table, it's not religious. But yet, I met a man not too long ago in Florida that's teaching his followers that when you sit down to break bread whether it's to have a turkey dinner at Thanksgiving, that you are partaking in communion. You're breaking bread. Are you listening? So when we went over to his house for lunch, he told me that we were having communion. That's being superstitious, or too superstitious, or being too religious. But the world today is caught up in the phenomena of this superstition, trying to be, you know, everything is spiritual. Everything's got to be spiritualized. Well, when you go and you look at the ocean, you don't begin to worship the ocean. You don't worship the sea. But yet there are people today that are marrying the ocean. And if you look into the history of Indians, the native Indians, and you find that they worship everything. They have a plethora of different gods, and so the trees are gods, and the bears are gods, and everything around them, the wind is God, and and uh, the rain is God, and, and so they pray to the gods. Well, that's what we're where we are today, brothers and sisters. That's exactly where we are today, where everything's becoming a god, and so that's what we're finding with this uh, Agenda 21, which is this uh, globalization and, you know, trying to preserve the earth and uh, the global earth and all this. That's what we're finding is that man is getting to the point now where the Agenda 21 is going to be to the point where it'll be a crime to even step on a rock or to pick up a rock, you know, and, and, and not even just to touch a rock. They want to protect and preserve. And just recently, you think this is crazy, but just recently Obama took thousands and thousands and thousands of, uh, I think, um, of my not miles, but I can't remember how much distance of the ocean, and he made it off limits. Did you know that? That nobody can fish those waters anymore. Those are off limits, those, those, uh, those waters. And it's just the beginning. Uh, eventually they're going to start uh, taking people's homes away here in the United States and they're going to start taking over certain parts of the land um, and they're going to drive the people off their land. That's exactly what we did to the Indians and now they're going to do it to their own people. We came into this, uh, into the United States or into America and we drove Indians off of their land, okay? And so now I believe that it's payback time. And I believe, just like God said to Israel, if you don't, 
if you make agreements and if you don't live right, he says, I'm going to make your enemies become thorns in your side. And so I believe those that used to um, occupy this uh, United States, the Indians that used to, the heathen that used to be on this land that considered everything a god, I believe they're getting into our music today. I believe that they are making a comeback. And I believe the Indians, and I don't mean India from India, like, you know, Mumbai, India. No, but I'm, but the, yeah, that too, but not in that sense. That's more like a, I would say that's more of a modern day Indian, like, you know, India, Mumbai, you know, that, that part of the world. That's a modern day Indian. But I'm talking about the, um, you know, because they believe in Hinduism and stuff like that. So I'm talking about more so the native Indians. And I think, because I'm hearing the beat of the Indian's drum in a lot of music coming out today, we're seeing um, the Indian, the native Indian showing up on the stage of the um, um, uh, TBN and now uh, teaching the people how to do a rain dance. Uh, so we're seeing this 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 heathen native Indian um, you know spirit uh, coming over the land, and God said even to Israel, He says, if you don't obey me and if you sin against me, He says, those that could have been overcome and you could have had their land, they'll become your enemies and they'll and they will uh, be a thorn in your side, and I think that's what's happening with us today. As God's people, because we are not, um, you know, driving, you know, God said, I'll drive them out before you. And I don't care what what they're trying to say as far as who's trying to write, rewrite the history books today. Um, history supports that we came and settled in the United States. God's people, Christians came here for, for religious freedom so that we could worship God in spirit and truth. And God gave us freedom and liberty, and yes, we drove the heathen off the land. Um, there are people, Americans on the land today, that are now siding with the Indians. Um, and I'm telling you, folks, this is nothing more, no, nothing less than demonic. This is very evil. Um, you know, when you when you think about what the Indians believe and the way they believe. And their way of life, it's, uh, well, in a lot of ways, it's, it's, um, it's predator, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, the Indians do not have a culture um, like you and I. It's not civilized um, in the sense that if you're not an Indian, you're not in. It's, you know, they're very racist. Indians are very racist. But then again, you and I tend to be racist towards the Indians as well. But you got to understand who has the upper hand, right? It's those that serve God that always have the upper hand. So are we going to be upset that God is driving our enemies out? Are we going to be, well, that's what's happening today. That's exactly what's happening. These people that believe in global warming and all that stuff, they love the Indians. They're caught up in Arizona, and you got the Pope going over to Arizona and setting up their their um, uh, uh, Lucifer telescope right on tribal land, where burial, you know, where very sacred land of the Indians. So why is it that? The, uh, the the Vatican thinks it's important to work with the Indians and work with the native spirits and all of that stuff. Well, because they're trying to tap into a dark, evil, wicked power that goes back, that, that is ancient and goes back. But this whole New Age movement today is going that way. That's what's happening today. That's the darkness that's coming over the land. Well, they're focusing on, listen, they're focusing on what they don't know. Looking into the universe, looking out there and trying to explore the unknown. Brothers and sisters, let you and I focus on what we do know. Let's focus on the known.
Amen? That's why I love the book of James, because James constantly says over and over, knowing these things, knowing these things, knowing these things, knowing these things, knowing these things. Thank God there's some things we can know, and that's what we should be focusing on, the known. How many times do we spend in our lifetime, we spend thinking about the unknown? And I want to deal with this because we are in a civilization. We're in a a time where people are being given over to suspicion. Suspicion. When you are suspicious of everybody and everything, that's dangerous. That's the unknown. You don't know, but yet you are focusing on the unknown. When you have a generation that lives by suspicion, nobody trusts anybody. And you can't trust anything because nothing is concrete. Nothing is uh, absolute anymore. There's no laws that are are the same anymore because they're constantly changing. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? In God's kingdom, we have principles. In God's kingdom, we have set rule. We have Law and order. We have rules. We have law. We have absolute structure in God's kingdom. Well, in this world, Satan's removing anything that is absolute. Anything that, I mean, it's like Will Smith. He comes on on, uh, one of the late night shows and he says, "What what if I want to say one plus three is six? You know, what, what if I want to change the, my math? What if I, hey, that's my choice. It's my world. It's my universe. It's my reality. It's my truth. Can you imagine what the world would be like if, if nobody was on the same page? That's what the devil wants to do. He wants everybody to be on a different page and at the same time wants them all to be one. How in the world can everybody be one and everybody's on a different page? You can't have that. That's total, complete chaos. And that's what the devil wants, people. He wants a total, chaotic state. That's what he wants. And isn't it interesting? The Illuminati, the New World Order, is order out of chaos. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, the devil wants to bring the world to a chaotic condition. That's what he wants. Why would he want that? Why would the devil want the world to be chaotic? Why would he want it to be unstable? Why would he want it to be volatile? Why would he want the earth to not be uh, peace and and to be stable and to be solid and to be sound. Why would the devil want to take away soundness? I'll tell you why. Because he's the devil. Hello? He's the devil. That's why. He wants the world to be in a sane asylum. He wants the world to be out of their minds. He wants the world to be totally, completely bonkers, people. He wants the world to be a a, a world full of insanity. That's what he wants. That's what he's after. You think the devil has a goal other than take your soul to hell? He doesn't have a goal. He just wants total, complete insanity. He's got nothing in mind, people. He's insane himself. Hello? Hello? He's insane himself. That's like falling around in a person that's insane. Right? And that's where we are. When you look at the likes of Hillary Clinton, you look at the likes of Donald Trump, folks, that's insanity. That's insanity. I don't know. Has there ever been a movie that's come out where it shows an insane person that uh, everybody's looking to? Any movies out that you know of that that shows a person that's totally bonkers, totally insane, and the people on the earth look to this person like they are the answer? Because that's where we are. That's where we are, people. The world is following leaders that are insane. There's no soundness. 
Are you listening? Is it any wonder that the, this generation is going to wonder after the beast? I mean, minds turn to mush. I mean, the people are being turned into zombies. Literally being turned into zombies. It's like, it's like they want to believe they live in a matrix. They want, it's what we st- we were, my wife and I were out yesterday and we were trying to find a certain place and we asked this person that should have known his, his surroundings and you know what he said to us? Instead of thinking for himself and thinking, where is this certain location right near where he lived? He says, do you have your cell phone on you? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Do you have your cell phone on you? What do you want to, what I need my cell phone for? I'm just trying to find this certain road, which you should know. It's right around where you live here. You've lived here how long? I mean, you know, no, he says, uh, do you have your cell phone on you? <laughs> that was like, good gracious. Like he didn't know himself. But that's the generation we're living in. The world is being turned into zombies. Zombies. You know, I hear the term zombie apocalypse. But folks, you and I can be infected with that if we don't focus on what we know. Are you listening? If we do not protect what we know, and we don't let anybody, even the, obviously the devil, he comes as a thief, let him steal the truth away from us. Amen? Or are we willing to sell the truth? The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. How many of today are selling the truth for a lie? Selling out. No, we need to hold to the truth that we know. Because there's a devil that wants to steal it from us. We need to hold on to the truth as, as it is so precious. It's absolute. It's what we structure and live our life by. Amen. And we will continue to live by and will continue to structure our life by. While the world has no structure, you and I, you and I must continue in the structure of truth within the boundaries of the truth, within the boundaries of God's laws and principles. Are you listening, folks? I hope this message is helping you. Do you really want to follow insanity today? Do you really want to be a part of the oblivion? Do you? Do you really want to be a part of that which is chaotic, that which is volatile, that which is unstable, that which is empty, that which is void, that which is void of understanding. Just follow zombies around, follow the insane. No. No, we don't. Jesus came to that man that was out of his mind. And when Jesus got done with him, he was in his right mind, clothed. He had sound mind again. That's who Jesus is, brothers and sisters. Amen. He gives us soundness. This is a generation that is just becoming mad, just becoming insane. And they trust in their instruments. They trust in their, in their computers, in their, they trust in their selves and they trust in one another. But they do not trust in their creator. No trust in their creator. Because they focus on what they don't know. The unknown God. The unknown God. Well, I'm glad that I can get to know my God. Amen. And we hear the cry of Paul the Apostle. Oh, that I might know him. May that be the cry of our hearts. May, may that be the cry of our spirit, brothers and sisters. Oh, that I might know him. Is that your cry today? Is that what you're crying from your heart and your spirit to know Jesus? Oh, that I might know him. Because that was the cry of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was not caught up in the unknown. He said, oh, that I might know him. 
Oh, that I might know him.